Hi, my name is Amelia Siriani, and I am the settlement worker in schools for Vernon and District Immigrant and Community Services Society in partnership with School District 22. Tonight, we are talking all about busing for the upcoming school year. And we are fortunate enough to have Robin Stevenson, the manager of the transportation department at uh, School District 22, who is here to give us a presentation and answer our questions about busing. Thank you so much for being with us tonight, Robin. Well, I'm really happy to be here. And I would like to thank you, Amelia, and your team over at the Vernon and District Community Services Society, Immigrant Community Services Society, I understand. So I really appreciate the invitation to be able to share this information with uh, folks who may need it out there. So thanks to you guys for putting this on tonight. Um, ready, I'll go ahead and just get started with the presentation. Um, again, uh, thank you everybody for joining us. My name is Robin Stevenson. I'm the manager of transportation services over at School District 22. And today I'm going to share with you some information all about busing at School District number 22. So if uh, without further ado, I'm just going to put a presentation up on your screen and uh, you can follow along with us. All right, well, I'm hoping everybody can see my screen out there. If not, just maybe enter something in the chat box. Today, as mentioned earlier, I'm here to talk to you all about busing at school district number 22 in Vernon. So school district number 22 provides safe and reliable transportation for many students to and from school each day. And transportation information can be found at the district website on the transportation page. I've included a link here for anybody who is interested. And I know that uh, I have provided a, a little leaflet uh, full of this information, so you don't have to worry about writing it down right now. It will be available to you. A little tip, when you're, you're going to our school district website, I would always recommend that you use Google Chrome or Firefox. Internet Explorer just does not seem to agree as much with our website. So when you're using a browser, browser look for these one of these uh, icons to the so first question you might have is do I qualify for a ride on a school bus to school? So we have different types of riders in our school district. Eligible riders qualify to ride the school bus and we design our bus routes to service eligible riders. Eligible riders are students who are attending their catchment school. Your catchment school is assigned to you based on where you live. That determines what school catchment you are in and what school is your catchment school. Um, students who live beyond 2.4 kilometers from their school, if it's their catchment school. And also, uh, uh, another way that you become eligible is if you attend an approved program of choice and live beyond 2.4 kilometers from that approved program of choice. Eligible programs of choice in school district number 22 are French immersion. Montessori, history at Charles Bloom Secondary, and the Academy of Inquiry and Adventure at Okanagan um, at Fulton Secondary. So French immersion takes place at several schools in our district. It takes place at Berto Elementary School, Alexis Park, Harwood Elementary School, and Seton Secondary School. The Montessori uh, course is located at Silver Star Elementary School. So if you are attending any of those eligible programs, which means you're also considered an eligible rider at school district number 22. We also service what we call courtesy riders. And courtesy riders are students who we provide transportation to because there's space available and it works on a scheduled route. So if we have something that we can figure out um, that will work for you in our scheduled route, we're very happy to accommodate a ride on there as long as we have space. Courtesy riders are students who are not attending their catchment school. So they're attending a different school outside of their geographic um, assignment. Or they do not attend an approved program of choice. Or they live within 2.4 kilometers of their school. Some people may ask, is there a fee for busing? But, and yes, there is. This year, the Board of Education approved our fees for next year in March. Um, those fees include a registration fee for all, so that's $35 for each student. And then there's rider fees on top of that, and it depends on what level of rider you are, what your fee will be, your rider fee will be. 
So if you're an eligible rider and you're attending your catchment area school that we talked about earlier, that's a, an additional $75 fee for the whole year. That's a return ride the entire year to and from school. If you're an eligible rider and attending a program of choice that we spoke about, it's $275 plus the $35 per year. If you're a courtesy rider attending in catchment, so let's say you live within 2.4 kilometers of your school, that would make you a courtesy rider in catchment, or perhaps you're going to an alternate ride to daycare after school or to grandma's house or something of that nature on a regular basis. You want an additional ride to dance class. That would be an in catchment courtesy ride, and that is $175 ride. And then there's the courtesy ride out of catchment. So if you're attending a, a school that is outside of your catchment area and is not uh, and not attending an approved program of choice, it's a rider fee of 275 for that if we're able to accommodate you. Um, should you need a second route, so perhaps you're going to two different places every day or every other day or every other week, the same will apply for the second route. Whatever fee you fall under on that board would would apply to that second row because you're picking up another seat on the bus. Should though, the second ride mean you're just riding the same bus you were riding anyway, there's no additional cost for that. Now, perhaps you're someone who only needs to take the bus after school. You don't need a ride in the morning because your mom and dad are driving you to school in the morning. So if you are only taking a one-way ride, you would only pay half of the fee. You wouldn't pay the entire fee. You would pay the whole registration fee, but only half of that rider. If you are only riding half of the semester, we still have to design the route and serve it to you and serve a seat for you, so that it would be still the same price. What about if you have several children in your family? Perhaps you have two, three, four, or more children in your family. The, the board determined that they, they didn't want to cause hardship for that. So the first child would pay. 100% of the registration fee and all of the rider. The second child who needs a bus would pay the same, 100% of the registration fee, 100% of the rider. However, the third and above child, so third, fourth, fifth child would only pay the $35 registration fee. They will not pay additional fees after that for the children. So the next question is, how do I register to ride the school bus? There's a school bus available. How do I how do I get on? So the first thing that you'll need to do is register for the school bus. And you can do this on the school district website. And I've again got the link here, which I provided to the um, um, Vernon and District Immigrant and Community Services Society so that they can share it out with you when anytime you need. Um, if you scroll down, there's forms there under parent resources, and there's two different kinds of forms. There's actually three now. One is for this year. So if you just arrived here, you need a school bus this year, there's a form for that. Or if you don't need to register until for next year's busing, there's a grade one to 12 form and a kindergarten form. We just try to keep our little, little kindergarten students a little bit separate. We like to take special care of them. It's their first time ever riding. Um, and they're so little that uh, we've created a separate form for those folks. If you accidentally registered on the grade one to 12 and you're a kindergartner, you would still get, a, get registered or vice versa. It's really important. Um, you need to register by May 15th of this year to be eligible for transportation next year. So that's an important date. I would mark that down in your calendars. May 15th is the last day to ensure that you're eligible. So you can still register after that date but we won't be designing the runs or holding your seat for you at that point. You would kind of only get a ride if there's space available. So it's really an important thing to try and get registered prior to that. So step two, once you go to the school district website and you find the online form, you're gonna answer the questions. There's about three pages of questions. You just fill in the blanks. Um, sometimes there's a drop down menu at the bottom, it'll say next, you hit next and go to the next screen, fill that all in. Eventually you'll get to the end and it'll say submit. You hit that button and um, then that form or that registration will come directly to our office. And, and the folks at the office who process the registration will receive it there and we'll get busy working on getting you registered for a school bus. So then you have to wait. 
You have to wait for the transportation department to process your request and then send you an email with um, information about the next steps. Once you are confirmed registered to the bus, you will need to pay your transportation fees to hold your spot. Payment is due to hold your spot August 15th. So that's another important date um, that, uh, that will be important to hold your spot on the bus. So how can you pay your transportation fees? There's several ways. You can pay online with a credit card. You can mail in a check to our office. You can drop off a check or cash at the drop box at the school district board office. Be sure when you're sending in a check or, or dropping off cash or a check that you are including your student's name and the school that they attend. And that way we can make sure we get that payment to the correct student. Um, there are complete directions to pay online on the school district website. And again, I've got the link here. If, uh, if uh, you want to pay online, there's complete uh, directions for you, step by step. So what if I cannot afford transportation? Many of us are in that situation. And, and so there is financial assistance available to qualifying low-income families. It's important for the school district that their finances aren't going to hinder somebody from coming from being able to ride the school bus. Another thing that's available to all students um, and all families are payment plans. So step one, if you would like to apply for financial assistance, is to fill out a financial assistance form. This can be found on the school district website. There's a, a form there, you print it off, you'd fill it all in, and then you would submit your application with a copy of your Canada Revenue Agency 2020 tax assessment to the school district transportation department. Now, if you just came to Canada, you might not have your tax assessment from 2020 at this point. And if not, then, then give us a call, or if you have some way of verifying your income for the year prior, um, you know, a T4 from work or something of that nature, you can fill in a note that says, look, I'm just new here, I haven't done my taxes, send in your T4 or the information that you do have available to you, and they will accept that um, as well. So I understand that not everybody will have that um, if you've just moved to Canada. Uh, step two, the school district will process your application and email you once um, we're done processing to let you know if you qualify or not. So what's next? You've registered, you've applied for financial assistance. Um, the next process is that the transportation department will be busy processing your registration. We'll be finding rides that work for you and assigning um, students on buses. Um, once we've done that, we will be printing off bus passes for all of the students who will be riding the buses and we'll be sending those bus passes to the schools for students to pick up there. Elementary school they distribute the bus passes to the kids with a little zip tied to their backpack so that they're safe and sound. If you're in secondary school, they can go to the office or a designated area in the school and can pick up their bus passes there. There's a little bit of a leeway in the first week of school um, so that kids can have a chance to pick up their bus passes. And by the second week is when we expect students to start throwing them, but we do understand people need to get to school and pick up their bus passes. So a little bit of leeway in that first week of, of So some information uh, to review. The, the review of school bus safety information on the school district website. There's all sorts of great information on there. We have bus safety videos um, that are very helpful. What it's like to ride the school bus, how to do it safely, emergency evacuation information. Right now we have COVID safety information videos up as well. Um, and, and those again are all available on the school website, uh, as well as tips for parents and all the forms that you need. Um, Everything that you need is on that website. So it'll be, it's an important um, address to keep in mind. If you type in SD22, the, the computer will find our website for you. So just a little bit of a review and, review and some important points to remember. School bus drivers and school bus monitors at the school are there to help you. If you need anything, you can ask them. Um, if you don't know what bus to get on, show them your bus pass and they'll help you get on the correct bus. If you're worried or nervous or just need some information, that, that's what they're there for. They're there for to give you a hand. Um, students 
must be registered to ride the school bus. So you cannot ride the school bus unless you're registered. For safety reasons, we're required to have a list of all the students who ride the school buses in case there's an emergency. And so we do need students to get registered to ride. Plus we wanna make sure we have space for everyone. Um, always carry and present your bus pass to ride the bus. So, so you just show the bus driver when you're getting on, you can show the bus monitor so they can make sure you're in the correct lineup. I would always recommend sending a note with your younger children on their first day riding the school bus. This will let the driver know it's their first time and, and they'll just kind of monitor and make sure that they're getting to the right location and off at the right stop. If, and that note kind of puts a face who needs that help. So that's a, that's a great um, tip and a great thing for parents to do out there. Also, ride the bus you're assigned to. You shouldn't be riding different buses. You need to ride the bus that you've been scheduled to ride. Kindergarten students must be met at the bus stop. It doesn't have to be by their parents. It can be by an older student or sibling, but they do need to be met at the bus stop by someone. Otherwise, the driver will keep them on board and we will start phone calling to see um, who to be um, um, and what we need to do next. The safety procedures on the bus, it, there's some videos on that as well as some information when you register at the bottom of the form, we'll ask you to review some safety information with students. And so please follow the safety procedures on the bus when you're riding to keep everybody safe. That's my presentation for this evening. Um, thank you so much for attending and I will open up the floor if anybody has any questions. Thank you so much, Robin. That was great. I'm very informative. Um, yes, we'll open up for questions now. If you do have a question, you can put it in the chat. I have some questions that were sent to me already. Um, that I would love to ask you. And then we'll see as some come through the chat and we'll get to those as well. So um, Robin, when we are filling out the form, um, the, the, one of the first questions is asking um, about the first day of service that you are requesting. Um, is there a specific date we should be putting in there? First day that you want to ride the school bus. Okay, so should we put the first day of the school year? If yes. that's okay. If that's what you require, then that's what I would put. Yes. Great, sounds good. Um, if there currently isn't a route to my neighborhood, um, because we can check, correct, on the website, the different routes. If there isn't a current route, and I am further than 2.4 kilometers from my child's school, should I still register? Absolutely, absolutely register if you want or need a ride. We are redesigning our routes right now as we speak. We're, we're waiting for people to register and we will be redesigning our routes to service eligible riders. So if there's not something in place now and you're an eligible rider, we're actually gonna be designing the routes to provide that. Okay, great. Good to know. Um, oh, yes. If I am registering multiple children, do I need to fill, fill out a separate form for each child or do I do it as a whole family unit? One form per child. So every child you have to start again and fill out a new form for each child in your family. Okay, great. And let's see, there's one in the chat. Okay, so Curtis is asking, what happens if we register our son next week, but we move to a different catchment over the summer? So we will be designing routes um, for folks who have registered as of May 15th. If you need to change your busing over the summer and you've moved, then re-register. So re-register, we take the most recent registration, that's what we will use. If we have something available, then we would change your busing schedule and let you know that. Okay, great. Good question. Uh, okay, we've talked about the deadline several times. I'll say it again, May 15th. What happens if I miss the deadline and I, I don't register my child before May 15th. Can I still get on the bus? 
you can still register for the bus and you will get on the bus if space available. Okay. Is so there a timeline to, to know when that's possible to get a space? We will tell you as soon as we process your registration whether or not there's space available. Okay. Yeah. Great. This is a it's a bit uh, for us to register. And right now, because we're going to be redesigning, we won't be letting people know exactly what the rides are until that redesign is finished. But we will be we will be putting them um, in our system and making sure that we're including them as we as we create routes for next year. Right. So no matter what, try as hard as we can to get that registration in before the deadline. Absolutely. Okay. Um, Oh, um, if my child is a courtesy rider, is it is it a guarantee that they will have their spot for the whole school year? Or if an eligible rider needs a spot, would they take a courtesy rider spot? Great question. And that is one of the reasons for the deadline is because once that we provide a spot to somebody, we want to make sure we can maintain that spot for the entire school year. So it used to be that you didn't have a guarantee your spot would be maintained. If that bus got full of eligible riders, there was a risk that the, cur the courtesy rider would lose their seat. But now that has changed with this deadline. If you have been registered and we've, we've confirmed with you that you have a spot, then you will have that spot for the entire year. Okay. Oh, that's great. That's great to know. Yeah. Um, Maritza is asking... She understands it will be a big job to undertake, but how long do you anticipate the redesign of routes to take? Great question. I suspect we will know in July, I will have the route completed. Okay, great. I, 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 I'm guessing it's a huge, huge job <laughs> to do. Yeah, hey. it's kind of fun though. It's you know, it's like a puzzle. You just gotta find <laughs> the pieces and put it together. <laughs> That's cool. That's a great way to look at it. Yeah. Um, if um I've registered for my child, I've paid the fees, and then something happens, perhaps I move or we realize, oh, I don't need the bus anymore. Um, will I get a refund? You request and cancel your busing prior to starting busing, you will get a full refund. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, and then my last question is, for families who did not have a route by their house and were previously considered courtesy riders, but now fall under one of the approved programs of choice, um, do they have to pay the bus fee right away or should they wait to confirm a ride will be available for their child? So we will be designing for, for those eligible riders. So I, you will have to pay before we can confirm your, ride, your, your schedule. And that is a confirmation to us that you want the ride. If you decide, then you look at it or you can call and ask, there wasn't a good spot for me before, is there now? We can let you know that. But again, we won't know that until probably beginning of July. Okay, okay, great. Um, that, those were, oh, actually, one more question popped into my head as we were going through the payment section. Um, so we can pay by credit card online and then cash by the mail or, or um, check by the mail or cash in, in the box at, at the school district office. Is there an option for an e-transfer? We do not accept e-transfers. Okay, great, great to know. question, yes. Okay, um, that are, that's it for all my questions that were sent in to me, and I don't see any new ones in the chat. So um, what we, we will we'll wrap up our, our evening then, and I just wanna thank you again so much, Robin, for taking the time. This has been so beneficial um, to understand the process of how to register, who can register, when to register, which is very, very important. And um, I wanna let everybody know if you are watching um, this recorded version of the webinar after the fact and you have questions, 
um, you can direct them to me. And if I can't answer them, then we'll, I will forward them on to Robin and we will get those answers for you. So um, if anyone uh, needs help, contact me, the settlement worker in schools at Vernon and District Immigrant and Community Services Society. Uh, you can give me a call or an email and um, anytime and uh, we will try and get all those answers, those questions answered. And also if you need any additional support to our clients filling out those forms, um, I am always here to help with that. So I uh, thank you again, Robin. Thanks to everybody um, for a wonderful webinar tonight. And I hope you have a great evening. Thank you so much for having me. And thanks everybody who joined us. Have a great afternoon or evening, evening. Yes. <laughs>